this week I did something a little unorthodox for me. I saw a sequel to something without actually having seen the first film because honestly I didn't have a ton of time and this was the only thing that fit my schedule. So I saw The Equalizer 2 starring Denzel Washington and I, not having seen The Equalizer, am very curious as to why they made this movie. It was, you know, it's a little bit spy thriller. It's mostly spy thriller. It's like a little bit... Um, redemptive save a kid from the hood story there's a little bit of like weird sub there's basically the problem is there are too many subplots to the equalizer too um you know so denzel washington stars as his former military man that much like is very clear from the beginning and i should say this is denzel washington and antoine fuqua's fourth collaboration together they did training day which is magnificent and then they did magnificent seven which is awful and then the equalizer which i did not see and of course now equalizer two and you know clearly they have a working cadence together but i think that also kind of allows them to maybe, I don't want to say get lazy, but maybe complacent. They get complacent about things. The plot, there are too many plots. There's some sort of weird, bizarre, like Holocaust, World War II plot with an old man who wants to reunite with someone. There's like a young troubled, uh, you know, teen. There's a, a Muslim woman who gets, um, you know, is, is the victim of like quasi, it's like a hate crime, but it's not like as bad as some of the other things that happen. It's it's just all over the place. And it, it drags on a little bit too long. It's over two hours long. The action is not that exciting. Um, the crime stuff is not that exciting. It doesn't feel motivated. Pedro Pascal is in it and he is a fellow agent. Melissa Leo reprises her role apparently from the first one. She is also a fellow agent and like friend of Denzel Washington's character. Bill Pullman plays her husband. So, you know, it's a good cast. I just don't know why they did this. Like, I don't know if the script just read better, but then they started doing the action and it wasn't. To, and, and I'm sorry, this is a mild spoiler, but there's like a, a, a weather act that the last third is set against that it's just like, it almost made me feel like it was like a Sharknado-esque film, but without the sharks. Like, it would have been more interesting if they had that because, it, you know, it's, I get frustrated also with these films where the action hero or the star, whoever it is, like, it's a know-it-all and they can do no wrong and you know they're going to survive because they know better than everybody else. I'm like, then there's no point. There's no stakes. So I feel like any Tom Cruise movie, any, and I love him to bits, but any The Rock movie, you kind of know how it's going to end. And this, uh, this movie, I don't want to say it's like trying to be smarter than its audience, but it's trying to maybe confuse its audience and like too many red herrings and... I just don't see the point of it. I hope there's not a third one because also what is there left to accomplish? Like there's one or two cool moments, but they're honestly, they're in the trailers. So it's like, what's the point? Just watch the trailer. You'll be fine. I don't know who this movie's for. I think there's a lot better stuff out there this summer, you know, across the board. It also telegraphs stuff way too early on. This movie telegraphed way too many plot points way too early on. And then again, it did tie everything up, but it was, was like, what's the point of this, you know, the Holocaust story, the, the, the neighbor, the Muslim neighbor story, or just any of this stuff. So uh, not a glowing review for me. I'm only going to give it two out of five.